opinions expressed over WRNG North Atlanta are not necessarily those of Ring Radio Management or Ring Radio Advertisers. If you believe that Dr. Henry Kissinger, David Rockefeller, and a handful of other very prominent people are still alive, still affecting world decisions, then according to our guest this hour, you have been duped. Our guest has been a frequent appearance on Ring Radio in the past, on numerous other talk shows across the country. His name is Dr. Peter Beter. That's not a spook. That is his real name. You probably heard most about him a few years ago when he charged that Fort Knox had been plundered of all of its gold. Today, some of the charges he's making are, if anything, even more sensational. Uh, Dr. Beter, we're glad to have you. We're talking with him, by the way, from his Washington, D.C. office. You truly believe, sir, that Nelson Rockefeller was murdered, Henry Kissinger and his wife Nancy murdered, David Rockefeller, Megan Marsha, and the rest of the crew. All of these people have been murdered in the last few weeks. Is that correct? Good morning, Chip. Uh, I can hardly hear you up here in Washington. Uh, however, uh, I did get the gist of your question. Uh, yes, uh, the people that uh, you have mentioned are now dead. Why? Who murdered them? That's a good question. Uh, it's so complex uh, that it's probably impossible to air it on the radio. But the main thing, the bottom line, is that a coup d'etat has taken place uh, beginning in the last eight months here in the United States. A coup d'etat against the ruling uh, people, uh, the real rulers of this country. And it is a prelude chip to a revolution uh, which is going to take place, which is going to begin to take place uh, in the middle of May. Of this, of this year, next month. It is uh, in the process right now, and the only reason I am speaking out uh, against possible death threats is that I want the American people to know uh, what is going on here in the United States, a real takeover uh, by certain people in order to not only uh, take over all the assets and powers inherent in the United States, but also to prepare for a nuclear war with the Soviet Union. We'll get into that in a moment, Dr. Beter. Now, when you say that Nelson Rockefeller was murdered deliberately with a one bullet shot to his temple, people, some, will accept that. The man is dead. There was a lot of confusion and mystery about when he died and how he died. But when you say that Henry Kissinger is, is dead, we just, we just heard of him on the 10 o'clock news. We've seen him on television in the past few weeks. How can you claim that Henry and his wife were on a flight weeks ago that was blown out of the air? Yes, that's a very good question, uh, Chip. Uh, number one, uh, we are living in an era of double look-alike, real ringers. Uh, this is not uh, uh, any uh, new uh, aspect uh, in the intelligence uh, field. As a matter of fact, one of the important things that is going to come out in the next few months is whether or not uh, Alger, uh, rather uh, Rudolf Hess is in the Spandau prison uh, in Germany. And I will comment on that uh, a little bit later. But the point is, these people are dead, and uh, because they must keep up the charade, Chip, not too long, they can't keep it up too long, but they can uh, keep the charade going for at least a month or so until their plans are formulated and take effect. All right, Dr. Uh, sure you hear, I've, I've mentioned also in audio letter 44, which I sent you, how uh, a radio, rather a, a television program uh, performed a hoax on the American people in order to uh, create the illusion in the myth that uh, Kissinger uh, is still alive. I know exactly how his double uh, came into this country, where he is from, and is a part of the great plan uh, in the intelligence communities that are now fighting among themselves. Okay, thank you. Dr. Beter, we're going to pause for a few messages. When we come back, I, I want to tell you all a little bit more about our guest, Dr. Peter Beter. I've not made up the man or the name. He has appeared on talk shows around the country a number of times. He's got a very interesting background. 
Essentially, what you will be hearing in the next 50 minutes on Ring Radio is that the Rockefeller strike for power has been disarmed, that the family members and close allies, many of them, are now dead, and that a coup d'etat, a revolution against this power, is now underway. If you've got some questions, and I'm sure you're going to have plenty, the number is 2619764. Right now, some fascinating conversation. I'm Chip Wood, our guest, Dr. Peter Beter, speaking from his Washington office. I've not made up the man, the name, or the background. He really exists. I've known about him for years. He's been a guest on Ring Radio and many other stations often in the past. In fact, uh, your credentials are rather interesting, sir. How did you become a counsel to the Exim Bank? John Kennedy appointed you to that plush Washington Post, didn't he? Yes, he did, Chip. Uh, I was uh, helping his campaign, uh, a very crucial campaign, as you recall, down in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, uh, he appointed me uh, counsel at the Export-Import Bank, uh, the largest uh, bank in the world, owned by the United States government. And I stayed in that position for six years. Now, were you already independently wealthy before taking that post? Yes, I was. How? I uh, sued the United States government and won all of my cases except my first uh, when I started practicing law here uh, in Washington in 1951. Uh, thereafter, I won all of my cases, and there were literally thousands of them. But from 51 to 61, that was my legal... Uh, breakthrough in Washington here, and then in 61, uh, President Kennedy appointed me legal counsel there at the Export-Import Bank, and then in 1967 to 68, I ran for the governorship of my home state of West Virginia, and I lost, and then I took an invitation uh, from President Mobutu and General Masiela in the Republic of Zaire in Central Africa, and I worked there for five years. And then I came back to the United States in 72, late 72, 73, and uh, I wrote that book, The Conspiracy Against the Dollar, showing how inflation was going to come upon the United States and people were going to lose all of their assets uh, through inflation. All right. That, sir, I, I mentioned all of that because your message today sounds so totally unbelievable that a lot of people will think I have, I have gotten some loony, quite, quite frankly, at a local phone booth. And I wanted people to know, you really exist. I know of you. In fact, you were kind enough to send me uh, last Sunday's Washington Post magazine. You are their lead story. The man who's been a lawyer since 1951, amassed a good deal of money, served as counsel to the Export-Import Bank, you will find him in who's who in the East. Now, they won't necessarily say that he's right today. Now, let's go back to what you say is the most important event being planned and being prepared right now. It, it began, or, or at least it, it hit the public, when Nelson Rockefeller was deliberately murdered. Murdered, you say, either by Henry Kissinger or by people working for him. Why? Why would Kissinger... One, as I pointed out in my audio letter number 44, in that one-hour tape cassette, I said that the largest, the biggest, the greatest uh, family dynasty in existence today is the Rockefeller dynasty. It is so wealthy, Chip, so powerful, that anyone who could get their hands on it would get trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars of assets in their hands, and this equals power. Uh, this is what has happened uh, to the Rockefeller dynasty today. It was a tremendous robbery, the greatest robbery uh, next to the robbery that took place at Fort Knox. So this is one reason uh, that they planned to take over the Rockefeller dynasty. Uh, many people, that if they do know about the Rockefeller dynasty, there is a book out, as I mentioned in that audio letter, and that's The Rockefellers by Peter Collier and Horowitz, mm -hmm. uh, which came out a couple of years ago. But uh, it's such a wealthy thing. It was such a target of wealth uh, that they finally uh, took it over uh, by way of uh, death, uh, murder, uh, guns, all out of the, out of the sight of the news media, 
and the fourth generation of the Rockefellers know what I am saying is true. However, at the present time, Chip, they are unable to do anything about it for various reasons. But you're saying the family members, the sons and daughters and cousins and nephews of David Rockefeller, Nelson Rockefeller, John Rockefeller, Lawrence Rockefeller, they know what is going on. That's exactly true. They do know, and I know for a fact that the, most all of them have heard audio letters number 43 and 44, uh, but they're because of certain conditions that are existing, threats to their lives, they are unable at the moment to move and to help save uh, the United States with the remaining sources of their power. Now, in your audio letter, sir, and I should explain that every month you tape a 45-minute to one-hour message to your subscribers called Dr. Beter's Audio Letter. In your recent audio letters, you suggested that there is a new gang of four taking power in the United States, names that most listeners will immediately recognize. Mike Blumenthal, Secretary of the Treasury, Harold Brown, Secretary of Defense, James Schlesinger, Secretary of Energy, and Zbigniew Brzezinski, uh, President Carter's National Security Council advisor, that these four, in league with others, have actually usurped the power of the Rockefellers and are planning. Did I get this correct? They are planning a first strike against the Soviet Union? Yes, sir. That is exactly right, precisely on uh, target. And as a matter of fact, uh, if you are aware, and I think you are, and so are your listeners, there is now an atmosphere of war uh, building up uh, here in the United States uh, with a a uh, nuclear war with Russia, and as a matter of fact, that is the real reason why, for example, ABC television, Night News, is building up this war effort because every night for the last, for the next ten nights, uh, they are building up the lack of resources, national defense that the United States has and Russia does have. But America does not have and Russia does have. Okay, thank you, sir. Many of you listening right now, have heard the theory in the past that those four names, Blumenthal, Brown, Schlesinger, Brzezinski, are really puppets of the Rockefellers. If Dr. Beter is right, the puppets have revolted against the masters and now plan war. If you've got some questions, and I think you might, we'll take them at 261-9764. I'm Chip Wood, our guest. Dr. Peter Beter from Washington, D.C., and you're on Ring Radio with him. i got to say, when I dialed in, I was greatly skeptical, but I've been sitting here listening, and now I guess you pretty much turned me around with your comments about Schlesinger and Brown and Brzezinski and Blumenthal. Um, I've been watching the uh, National Security Council gather rapid reaction military forces under their authority now for the last two years, and I think they're getting into a position where they can, in fact, make a first strike at Russia, or at least they can try. But I want to play devil's advocate for a minute with your guest, Chip. Um, Lyndon LaRouche has said that one method that the Rockefeller machine has of discrediting people like himself is to fund and direct people who go so much farther to the extremes than he is that the average person discounts the entire line of talk. And I'm wondering if your guest has heard of this technique and if he can say anything that would convince me that... He's not throwing up a screen trying to make me think that David Rockefeller is ineffective when, in fact, he isn't. That's a very good question, uh, and I have a high regard for LaRoche. You do? There is a danger that when you try to tell the truth and bring out how awful the situation is today, people will tend to be turned off. And also, uh, there are, will be people who would just not believe it. Uh, that, yes, that is a uh, danger. Uh, however, I'm not playing uh, uh, really uh, to the uh, public today. I'm, I'm really recording history uh, that is going on behind the scenes. Uh, actually, I could care less whether people believe me or not. I know that what I'm saying is absolutely true. I do know that the intelligence community uh, is frustrated at the present time in that, for example, the Army Intelligence uh, cannot get their intelligence reports up to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And this has been going on ever since uh, uh, Kissinger and his cohorts, the BBBS boys, 
I have been involved, and that is the reason why I had to meet uh, with uh, General uh, George Brown, who was then chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and I did give him information which he had not been getting uh, from the British and from Canadian intelligence. Uh, Dr. Peter, let me interrupt. By the way, you said something that I simply don't believe. You said you don't care whether people listen to you or not. You must care. Believing what you believe, you must care. Well, uh, I correct myself. I did misspeak. But it, it's a point that I must get the news out uh, uh, so that people will at least know that uh, these things are taking place. I'm really an historian. And... Uh, after all, no one will know, for example, uh, what has happened to uh, Rudolf Hess uh, until they really realize much many years later that the man in Spandau uh, prison is not Rudolf Hess, that the real Rudolf Hess died uh, four years ago in Germany, and that he was a double agent, or rather an agent of uh, British intelligence. Same way here with uh, Kissinger's papers. Uh, those things are the way he is trying uh, to, uh, the late Henry Kissinger is trying to prevent the American public from knowing uh, what actually took place when he was here in the, in the government. And so I don't want these things to come out 5, 10, 15, 25 years from now. I want them to know that these things are going on right now. I want the American people to be treated not as children, but as full United States citizens. And these people who are in the government today are actually non-elected officials, like Brezhnev, I mean Brzezinski, rather, and Schlesinger, and Brown, and Blumenthal. These people here uh, in, in centers of power here in Washington are actually running the government with Carter, racked with uh, cancer, down there in off of Georgia, uh, trying to preserve his life, uh, trying to do everything he can to preserve his health, while these four boys and their cohorts here are really running the country today. Okay, Dr. Beter, uh, you, you shared with us one of the most extraordinary theories that anyone's ever heard on Ring Radio. A lot of folks want to talk to you. If you want to get on the line, it's two six one nine seven six four, and we'll take those questions right after this. 68 Ring Radio. Dr. Peter? Yes, sir. Are you expecting us to believe this is an anti-communist revolution? Uh, I don't... What, what is your question specific? Uh, Chip, I'd like to ask the man if he is expecting his listeners to believe that this so-called revolution is anti-communist in nature. Uh, no, sir, it is not anti-communist in nature. Uh, this revolution that is going to take place in the beginning of uh, the middle of May, uh, I hope he understands what I have been trying to say. I am trying to say that a coup d'etat against the ruling circles, uh, the real ruling circles uh, of this country has taken place by murder against the Rockefellers. Now, uh, the people uh, who were supporting the Rockefellers are now in power here in Washington, D.C. These people are not communists, they are atheistic Bolsheviks, the new atheistic Bolsheviks who are now in power here in Washington, and their revolution will begin taking hold in the middle of May. Now, why do I say that? It's because there has been a definite intelligence plan for the last three and a half years to go to war in the Middle East. Uh, the Americans... You know, uh, just as the Cubans are the fighters for Russia in Africa, we have our own fighters in the form of the Israelis. And that is what I proved in my audio letter number 40 in the Guyana episode. Beginning sometime in the middle of May, this plan has been changed three times, but the plan that is on track today is for American and Israeli strike forces to bomb and destroy for a period of 10 years, the Saudi Arabia oil fields. That is why the private agreement with Israel was made here last month to the effect that Israel will be getting oil for the next 15 years. And that is why Vice President Mondale is in Norway signing agreements 
that Norway will supply Israel with oil, and therefore everything is going to be planned. All it is necessary now is for a trigger in the Middle East, whether it is manufactured or not, for Saudi Arabian oil fields to be bombed, put out of commission for the next 10 years, and this will give an excuse to our secret rulers now in the government to close down America, institute gas rationing, institute controls over capital exports, and this is going to bring on a dictatorship here in America. You're on 68 Ring Radio. Uh, hello, Doctor. I wonder if you can tell me if what you have to say relates to the, to the documentary The Late Great Planet Earth Orson Welles put on where he mentioned several things similar to what you're talking about, plus a uh, ten-country power that uh, is supposed to take over uh, ruling a uh, good share of the country or something like that. Dr. Dieter? Yes, uh, there is a very good question, you know, but today, uh, 1984, is here with us. Science has come so far, uh, Chip, that the American people don't realize what science has brought forth in ways of war and espionage, sabotage, and just plain snooping. They have weapons today on both sides that are so gruesome that a person cannot have a private life today. For example, I've mentioned that they're going to bring a dictatorship here beginning next month uh, in the United States. And one of the things they're going to put in operation is a constitution, a new constitution, uh, and it is already ready. It's called the New States Constitution. And uh, Chip, if anyone wants a free copy of that, all they've got to do is to write me here in Washington. Okay, we'll share your address, sir, in about eight minutes. You're on 68 Ring Radio. Yeah, I'd like to ask your guest, uh, what does he think about the, uh, the Watergate thing? Does he think that was a frame-up, or uh, was it just uh, uh, something, uh, 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 some stupid move or an accident, or uh, what, what's his... Uh, feeling about Watergate? That's a very good question also. Uh, the Watergate was done for a certain purpose. I've gone into great detail in my audio letters on Watergate, but the bottom line is uh, that it was to uh, take out uh, uh, Spiro Agnew and uh, President Nixon in order for Nelson Rockefeller to come into power. And uh, of course, you know, he did get into power because Ford... Uh, uh, nominated him uh, under uh, Nelson Rockefeller's 25th uh, Amendment to the United States Constitution. And had Sarah Jane Moore been uh, uh, more accurate, uh, Ford would have been murdered and uh, Nelson Rockefeller would have been president. I was privy to all this through the intelligence sources that I have. And uh, so uh, these things do happen and they were just about to happen here in the United States. Uh, when someone thwarted uh, uh, the shots of Sarah J. Moore. She did say she wanted to make uh, Nelson Rockefeller president, but she was programmed uh, through a certain intelligence agency by way of the Treasury Department uh, who did supply her with a gun to shoot uh, President Ford. You're on 68 Ring Radio. Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, I hope you can hear me. I first want to take a little issue with who you say is at the center of the command and control structure. And I'd just like to indicate, I would say the British and British link forces of who Schlesinger, Brzezinski et al. are part of. But if you let me paint another scenario that will, I think, concur with your general statements on the Middle East situation and the war situation. The following has occurred and is in the process of occurring. One is your nuclear hoax in Harrisburg, in an attempt to use that issue to create such anti-nuclear propaganda and hysteria to lead to the shutdown of your nuclear industry. Secondly, is at the same time this is occurring, the contrived oil price increase which is occurring, the Middle East strike in Saudi Arabia would obviously raise that uh, possibility of a major oil crisis, a transportation sabotage with Alfred Kahn at all, breaking up the Teamsters negotiation, other union negotiations, all dealing with transportation, 
that is causing maximum chaos and confusion in the economy, with the same time that a new federal government agency, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, has been established on the basis of the Trilateral Commission member Samuel Huntington's document, The End of Democracy, to create top-down regimented control in the country. Now, to add to that, one thing on the whole question of the Soviet uh, issue, the confrontation issue, is that coming very shortly is a strategic air command uh, maneuver called Global Shield 1979. Sir, before you get into too many details, we've already thrown enough at the audience, I think. A question for you, because essentially what you're saying is the Lyndon LaRouche U.S. Labor Party interpretation of events. Do you think the Soviets today are an enemy of the United States? I'm asking the caller. Uh, no, I think there's three factions in the Soviet Union. I think the dominant faction around Brezhnev, as, uh, de as indicated by his agreement with Helmut Schmidt in Germany, demonstrates his particular faction is willing to negotiate a just peace and detente. Okay. Now, let me, uh, let me ask Dr. Beter to clarify that, because you've referred, Dr. Beter, to the secret rulers in this country as the new Bolsheviks planning a nuclear war against, I would presume, the old Bolsheviks ruling Russia. Do you think the Soviet Union is an enemy of the United States? Uh, no, not at the present time. Uh, what has happened in Russia has been a new revolution. Uh, the old Bolsheviks have been expelled. Uh, these cadres of old Bolsheviks are now coming into the United States. Uh, over 56,000 will be coming in between uh, May the 1st of this year and the end of September. Uh, most all of these are the old Bolsheviks uh, who have been ruling Russia for the last 60 years. They are now coming to the United States to make a new uh, Bolshevik revolution here in the United States. And the Russian leaders today, believe it or not, it's a hard thing for many people to accept this. Uh, there are no Bolsheviks in the hierarchy, in the military or political field now in Russia. And they are expelling uh, those old Bolsheviks and they are now coming in here to the United States to support the new Bolshevik revolution, the new atheistic Bolshevik revolution, uh, which is taking place here now right before our very eyes. But the, but the American people don't know it because they're being distracted by other uh, points of entertainment. Okay, thank you. I did promise I'd give Dr. Beter's address. I'll do it now, and we'll keep it on file here. The name is Dr. Peter Beter. It is spelled exactly like it sounds. The address, 1629-1629 K Street, K as in Knight, K Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20006. I'll repeat it again in about 10 minutes. You're on 68 Ring Radio. Good morning, Chip. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Doctor, I'd like to ask you, uh, with your knowledge, why should our enemies uh, resort to the atomic bomb or conventional warfare? And let me tell you why my reasoning is that way. It is so convenient to get to us through the private and the military and medical for 27 years perform guinea pig experiments unknown to the patients. Right. And also, we will get it, in my opinion, Doctor, in the air, in the water, and in the food in subtle ways, and that would be self-destructive to use the atomic bomb on conventional warfare. Will you comment on that? Yes, sir. That is happening exactly right now, uh, what you've been talking. Biological and radioactive warfare is now going on right now. Uh, the American uh, government is not letting you know about it. However, because the Bolsheviks who are now in control of our government uh, is not trusted by the leaders of Russia today because there is such a distrust between the uh, leaders today of both countries. Uh, there will be a limited nuclear war. Not only that, but with the Russian cosmospheres, which your government has not made public, these Russian cosmospheres are over every missile base of the United States on the average of five to one missile base, and they can destroy our missiles in silo before they are released. Now, Dr. Beter, you have made uh, um, some incredible predictions in the past. Some are unverifiable. Some did not occur, as you said, would work out. 
It is today, the middle of April. You're saying in the next six to seven weeks we will see nuclear war. No, no. What I'm saying is that in the next six weeks you will see war erupt in the Middle East. That will be the excuse, Chip, to close down America on the pretext of gas rationing and all the other conditions uh, which will prevail here in the United States. Shut it down, bring on a new dictatorship in America, and then prepare for the strike against Russia. Well, what if I get you on the phone, sir, June 1st or June 20th or July 1st, and nothing has happened? None of this has occurred. Well, that, listen, this has happened before, uh, Chip, in the past. In other words, this plan that they have has been in the works now for several years. And the timetable, even Henry Kissinger has admitted before certain private business gatherings that the plan has absolutely uh, slipped. Now, I'm only giving you the plan that is now on track today. I can tell you that the most, all of the major multinational corporations now are getting into their offices studies that they have asked certain intelligence agencies which sell private uh, intelligence for a large fee, what the alternatives would be, one, in the event that Saudi Arabian oil fields are blown up, two, the Iranian oil fields are blown up. And some of these intelligence efforts are saying that in the event that there is a 50-50 chance as of this day that the Saudi Arabian oil fields will be destroyed for a period of 10 years, and there is a 50-50 chance that the Iranian oil fields will be destroyed. You realize what would happen? That would also uh, break the heart, literally, of Europe. It would uh, cripple the heart of Europe uh, because they would be denied a substantial amount of oil. It would cripple the heart of Africa and especially Japan. But it would give our new rulers here in America a chance to shut it down, make sure that you cannot travel from point A to point B, that you cannot export any of your capital abroad. The number is 2619764. Our guest, Dr. Peter Beter. Hello. Go ahead. Yes, I've got a question for the doctor. Uh, if it's true that the Rockefellers, many of them have been killed and so forth, and that Kissinger is dead, and these people are so efficient as to supply an identical person to Kissinger to fool the public, then uh, why is it they haven't uh, silenced the doctor? I mean, he's out exposing something that's obviously got to be a tremendous plan, and he's out talking about it, and... There doesn't seem to be anything being done about it by these people. Yeah, why are you still alive, sir, if you're right? Well, um, I've answered that question in my last audio letter, number 44. But uh, to repeat it, uh, I've always placed myself in the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I believe that what I'm doing uh, is the work of our Lord. Uh, number two, five years ago, uh, the Rockefeller uh, family, all 84 members of it at that time, uh, voted uh, not to do anything to me, and, I, and that is thanks to the, uh, the cousins, the fourth generation uh, Rockefellers. They met uh, back in 1974 at uh, in their big estate up there in the Westchester County and uh, voted on what to do with uh, Dr. Beter. And the fourth generation, more or less, I believe, uh, saved my life. As far as uh, the public uh, people are concerned here in Washington, they feel that uh, I'm uh, a non-entity, that I do not really exist. Uh, they have the giant mass media uh, to create doubt as to what I am saying. Uh, so therefore, I am no threat to them at the present time. But should I get to be one, uh, I will surely be killed. Okay, 68 Ring Radio. No, they got to turn the they've got to turn the radio down. Turn your radio down because you'll come on live, not with the delay. 68 Ring Radio. Go ahead. Good morning. Uh, I have a question for Dr. Uh, Beter uh, regarding the Kissinger situation. 
Yes, sir. Is he an employee of the federal government in any way? He, he meaning Kissinger, or he meaning our uh, guest? Kissinger. The real Henry Kissinger is dead. Uh, he, his body and that of his five bodyguards are at the bottom of the North Atlantic Ocean, along with Nancy Kissinger. What you are seeing today, and you probably will be seeing uh, in the future, or rather hearing, that will be a double for Henry Kissinger. Uh, Henry Kissinger, they cannot allow him to die because he's a part of this dictatorship. Uh, he was killed not by the Russians, by, by, by another intelligence organization as they flew out of London. Uh, that was all in my tape number 43. Let, let me repeat again, by the way, Doctor, for the benefit of listeners who are not familiar with you and had not heard you in the past on, on Ring Radio or other talk shows around the country. Every month you prepare a, uh, an audio letter, a taped cassette message to your subscribers, 45 minutes to an hour long. And Dr. Beter has asked me to say anyone who wants some information about him or information about his program can write directly to him in Washington. The address is 1629 K, K is in Knife Street, Northwest. Washington, D.C., 20006. Dr. Beter, in your, in your tapes, and I've heard several of them, read your book and other materials, you credit uh, intelligence sources, not only in this country, but around the world, with giving you information because they're frustrated. They, their superiors don't listen or don't act. They don't know what else to do, so they give you information that most people, I'm not privy to. But a question a few people might wonder about, why don't these intelligence sources give such information to, to people with a wider following, if you'll forgive me for saying it that way, like Paul Harvey or Ronald Reagan or Walter Cronkite or Mike Wallace. Why do they give it to you? Well, because uh, I'm not a part of the establishment. Uh, the people that you mentioned are a part of the establishment. And if they mention anything that I have been mentioning, uh, they would be shut up. In other words, they would not be on the mass national media. And that is why I am not on the mass, uh, mass uh, national media. And I have to go by way of the underground, so to speak, and that is by my audio tapes, by these one-hour tape cassettes, uh, which uh, there are now uh, quite a number of people in uh, various parts of the world who are now listening to these tapes. Well, if that's all true, sir, then why did the Washington Post just Sunday devote a page and a half in their magazine to you? That is a mystery to me. This is the first time uh, that uh, any major newspaper, like the Washington Post, uh, has devoted any time to me. Maybe it's because, and I'm only speculating here, I'm, uh, I can't say for sure, uh, maybe the, because it's uh, the fact that the four Rockefeller brothers are now dead. Okay, sir, I'm sorry, we have to run. It's been a fascinating hour. We'll have you back on in June, and I'll be back tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Join us. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Is this Mr. Uh, Dr. Beter? Uh, this is Don Harden. And uh, you probably don't know me, but I've called you before on Atlanta talk shows. I'm calling you long distance from Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, indeed. And I was wondering if you heard about this uh, Henry Kissinger appearance on Meet the Press yesterday. You mean the dead man? Yes. That was an old thing. Was it? Yes, indeed. Yes, I called our local affiliate station. They said it was a live program. Oh, sorry, it was not. The only thing live on there was certain people, but the rest of it was all dead canned stuff. How far back do you think that thing was taped? January 20th. And it's already been shown? Huh? It's, it has already been on the air? No, this is the first time. Oh. And that's January 20th. That's before the famous January 26th. Absolutely. Before January 26th. That famous day. You notice how nervous he was? And they didn't ask him anything about his uh, Rockefeller, did they? Didn't ask him a thing about the Rockefeller thing. Didn't ask him a thing about the China visit. Didn't ask him blah, 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 blah. Well... Did hope ever perpetrated? You ask yourself the question, why did they do a thing like this? Uh, that is a good question. Yeah, trying to, you know, they're trying to destroy my credibility, that's what. Mm hmm In fact, they put out a big interview with him just a couple of weeks ago in the Atlanta Journal. That's right. All fake. That was no interview. 
In fact, CBS Evening News last week had a big quotation from him that he supposedly made last month about the MX missile. It was in CBS Evening News' uh, arms race report. Right, well, ask yourself why they're doing this. Uh, because the coup d'etat has already taken place here in America. Mm-hmm. They can't keep this to raise up very long. I hope not. Well, the reason is because uh, the coup d'etat has already taken place. Yes. The American people are in for a tremendous surprise. Don't say I didn't warn you. I certainly will not. I've been subscribing to your audio letters, and I find them extremely interesting. Well, they're all true, but no one will believe them. And I try to tell people, and they just give me this funny look, you know. Well, our Lord is going to chastise us for not, you know, the truth has a, uh, has a way of killing people. Yes, I've found that to be true. Now you ask yourself why NBC went to all that trouble to try to uh, discredit me with an old tape and nothing about anything in there that's going on today. Well, that's one reason why I called you. I appreciate that very much. I'm mad about it. I'm going to do something about it. Well, I look forward to your next tapes. <laughs> and uh, as someone, as Harry Davies, uh, by the way, Harry Davies is no longer a uh, talk master on Ring Radio. He's still working there, or is he? He's still working there. He's the general manager of the station there. Right. How are they doing? Okay. They're, they seem to be doing okay. Uh, have you heard about this new program? What's not new? It's a syndicated talk show called Rough House. Yeah. And there was this man, Gary Allen, on there. Yeah, Gary and, Allen was on that show, huh? And he referred to you not by name. Oh. And he said, uh, I have it taped here. He might, I might mail it to you. Would you do that for me? I most certainly will. And I, can, I have it on K Street. That's right. And, uh, That's kind of a gun. What's good about down here lately? He said there was an, un, as far as I can remember, he said an un, uh, a man in Washington, D.C. with a strange name, he said, <laughs> who takes the conspiracy theory and uh, explodes it. Wow. And he says it's people like you that gives him a bad name. Is that right? That's what he said. He said that you... About three weeks ago? Uh... It was about three or four weeks ago. It, it was shown. Did he mention my name? Did not mention your name. Right didn't, right. didn't even get your charges right either. He said that you claimed that the Rockefellers and the Soviets were having uh, playing war games on the back side of the moon, and that, <laughs> and that they were that there were a bunch of missiles in San Francisco Bay. Yeah. Poor fellow. He did, he, he did that in South Africa too, you know. Really? Yeah, he did me a favor. Everybody started writing to me. Mm-hmm. And now my audio letters are published, uh, uh, produced down there. One thing he said that I thought was funny, he sort of uh, decried the fact that you seem to get on more radio talk shows than he does. Isn't that awful? <laughs> Why well, turn down talk shows? I see. See? Uh, I only pick and choose. Uh-huh. I just turned down the Larry King show. That's nice. <laughs> The heck with them. What do we need them for? Yeah. Where were they when we needed them? You're so right. I only stick with the people who were good to me while I was coming up, you see? Mm-hmm. Who needs them now? Well, I'm 21 years old, and I'm going to college, and, you know, right. just coming up in the world. Remember me in your prayers. I certainly will. And is there anything red hot going on that I, that I might know about? Yeah, we don't have very much time, old buddy. I'll, I'll put it out in my next case. 